ask you to uh, turn to the section on the roads. And the first item problem will be on the mold. And this is an issue that Commissioner Weisenbecker has discussed concerning private contractors and in-house. Robin has uh, been reviewing this for several months, I think, and has some additional information on this as it concerns submission of the project. So, Robin, if you comment on where we are. Do you want to do my
the side of the bus. So that would have to cut. Now we took a roll and checked IDs and did all that for probation to make sure that they were who they said they were. So if you, Ron, if, if let's just say that there is a problem with getting the uh, community service people to pick up the trash, what is your option outside of that? Well, if you kind of bleed off into the leader program, mm -hmm. I'm trying to bring in. Yeah. Um, what my thoughts were is that again, the leader, leader program, let's just get control of the leader, not beautification, mm -hmm. not any of that stuff, just clean up. Um, so we have two positions posted mm -hmm. right now for a crew leader and a technician or a labor. Then um, we have created eight districts and then they will run on a route and it, the districts cover all the 45 and 55 miles <coughs> of the road, which is where most of your leaders at and we'll I've been using laborers for roads doing the trash until we can get the position high and I'm thinking once we go through the first round which is handling these leaders that we should be able to cover all those roads like four times a year and get all the way up. And um, so we were going to use that program and let it grow as time goes by. I didn't realize that, that staff was going to litter as a separate issue. So I didn't mean to get off track. But there, there's two settlements of it. Okay. One is what uh, Robin was referring to and behind that section. Okay. Uh, reference this letter is the map that Robin's prepared. Okay. The first part of that letter relates to code enforcement. And so that's why that there appears to be a, okay. the only one section. There's, there's okay. actually two different So Robin, if I'm hearing correctly, then your recommendation in order to get the mowings and have control over that entire process and set you up the system so that mowing is consistent, if you want to say that, throughout the county, then you feel like that the way to do that is in house. Yes, sir. Robin, excuse me. This is not our first attempt at this. Right. A number of years ago, we had in house. In 1992, we got out of the mowing. And I've been trying to keep up with it since then, cost wise, and they've been really kind of making eggs. And we, in maybe four or five, began to go back to a highway, which is what we have now. Because part of the concern back then was we didn't have enough equipment to get around as rapidly as everybody wanted. So we had to bring in contract help to do that. Now, the other side of that coin is, well, they don't pick up. They gave you the price they gave you for cutting the grass. The contractors. The contractors. Right. And they did not say, here's the price for picking up the trash and cutting the grass. It's cutting the grass. And the difficulty from a public works standpoint is, they have a contract to cut the grass. They cut the grass not based on our schedule, based on their schedule, which equates back to the price you have. If you want them to do more, you're going to have to pay more. Am I correct? Well, say when you go take the mower contract out the bid, you've got to give a person an idea of how much they're going to be mowing for them to quote you the good price. So you just base it on three cuttings a year. So you get that price based on that, but they, they do pick up trash, but they don't go out of their way to look for trash. You know, and I'll call them and give them all the time to know they send somebody back. And it's just a constant. If it rains real heavy, like if we budget for five cuts, and it's a heavy year of rain and it's hot, it's something to know. You know, there's, there's, there's going to be more. Okay. And Mark's concern that you had expressed to me uh, is not just in-house or private contracting, it is the width of the cuts that we provide. We provide full cuts and we provide half cuts which go to the bottom of the ditch. Well, we eliminated the half cuts this year. So, 
escape me. <laughs> because there's a, there's a, I had a lot of girl runner yet. <laughs> so, so what I'm hearing you say, Robin, if I understand you right, then what you've determined is that you can do in-house molding and add additional loans for what's currently being done for the same amount of money. Right. And I put an extra person on the north end and the south end because in my mind, if we had that extra person to make that round faster, I could pull one and jump back and help the south end. The north end is just more congested and it takes longer to load mm -hmm. than, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, we do have the, I guess, the equipment for the two individuals, or are you looking to get it in the splash uh, allocation? Well, I put it in the budget as a budget line item for new equipment for those crews because we don't have the equipment. We, we're, most all of our equipment is due for a replacement. We've gone so many years, we sure can't push them any further. Cause I, I saw that at one point five the location of funds, where we take those funds, will be what we determine during the budget process. Mark, you have a question? I don't have a problem with half cuts. I think that's great to just save us money. But I think when it's dry, real dry, then we do full cuts instead of just going down a schedule. Well, we don't do it on the schedule. We don't do any moving on the schedule. It's only as needed. Like if we start getting a lot when we did have cuts, there's certain time of years you catch a lot of heat from parents, the kids are standing on the side of the road, or <coughs> the bus shops calling. So we try to jump in there and get a half cut <coughs> just to satisfy those people. And then and, and it would never work out in the perfect world where it would, you know, be wet when they call, but that's usually like when school first starts and during the school year, it's really... But when it's dry, I think we need to focus on full cuts. Yeah. And driveway, you see. Out in the county, you have a driveway going into a, a timber track. And I've seen pine trees as big around as my arm growing out of the driveway. And gum trees and stuff like that. We need to, I think, Pay more attention to that too. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to do we have a batwing? How many people have attention to batwing? The bell today is a new one. Well, we need new ones, but I'm going to really try to get the new one set up first, and then the next year, he's all going to hold on back. And basically, that batwing, you all, if you don't know, it cuts a lot wider. Basically, instead of looking like a half cut, it looks a lot wider. You don't have to take it to the time. You might even do one sweep with that batwing. They got to be bigger, basically, yeah. because I, I know we Well, you have a hard time maneuvering with a bigger, anything bigger than that, you're going to repair your driveways and move boxes and apply stuff. But that would be kept you on your slopes and stuff yeah. like that. I just know we got more open area there. in the county versus like in, in the city. Uh, right. It's usually like, God, when we got through the off the top of your head, the equipment we have for the grass cutting. Oh, our, our, we have new columns that pull our back wings, they're in close. 
Yeah. 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 That makes a difference too when they don't have to deal with the elements and yeah. the dust and everything else. They can just really focus on the AC unit, you know. Well, it allows us too to keep low when it's drizzling. Mm -hmm. You know, not have to start, you know, because it's
Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I understand that. And of course, the tail ditches from a level of importance is much more important for whether growth has grown up around the bridge. But I think at the same time, you kind of got to mesh that together. I mean, they're, they're, they're not as equally important, but when you weigh the aesthetics and what this community needs to look like, herd appeal, I've used that term before, that plays a huge part in it. Um, but I think that, um, you know, as I've said, I, you know, we're just going to try to find a way that we can help you get done. So what I'm here, so that I'm clear, we're talking about probably a minimum of five cuts. Yeah. Minimum five cuts, which means also five times all the way through the county on 360 miles of roads, we're also going to be picking up trash at the same time. And I'm going to, the routes on the leader program will stay in coordination with the mowing crews. Mm -hmm. So that the leader program folks, and I'm sure two people will struggle, but we'll just have to add, it'll have to grow. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Some of the uh, reason y'all already looked at the uh, number of employees of public works, and y'all have commented notifications about the amount of work that they are doing. And I will tell you, in large part, is because of the organizational structure that Robin has put in place from the maintenance shop all the way through. If, when, a, when an employee walks in there, a crew leader walks in to the office, they have now put on Screen so that they know what they are supposed to be doing, they know what the calls for service are, where they need to be, and it's organized. And Robin and her staff have already put that in place. They don't have to go in the morning and stand around and say, well, Where do we go today? Or what do we do? They know that and they get in there. The same thing on the, on the uh, repairs. PMs on the vehicles. It's already scheduled when they walk in there. If somebody's getting PM on a law enforcement vehicle or anything else, they call and say, I'm due for a PM, and they set their appointment when they need to come in. They don't just drive in and wait until that's done. And uh, not only that, they contact. PMs over the we need you so they can So like I say if you haven't seen that, uh, that will explain to you why they're able to do what they're doing with the amount of personnel that they have. Well that's also the reason why I just feel like if we could be much more efficient, accomplish a whole lot more with your staff and us doing all the mowing and the litter control because then you have control of it. You, you're working it. You have a system that's in place. As I said, you know, if I get a call from a customer who says, listen, it, you know, it needs mowing or it needs, it needs trash picked up, all I got to do then is call Mr. Richard, and he calls you and say, this is when it's scheduled to mow. People are satisfied when they get that. And when I can't tell them when it's going to be done, then, uh, then we do uh, need to improve on it. Well, my goal is to make sure that every employee walks in the door and has a job. Nobody's going to look for something. Do you? Nobody's going to ride around and look for anything. Mm -hmm. They don't have a designated route. If I wanted to find them, I know within 10 roads I should be able to find them. You know, and, because it's so unproductive, they might already have the plan. And everybody be accountable. And if the county manager called me and said it was raining today, what did y'all do? Then I can go back and tell them everywhere we've been and what we did and what we accomplished. Because like I told them, if y'all are or y'all are not gonna do anything, go home. We just sit at home, right? And go back to work when it quits. But if we're gonna keep working and make forty hours, we all work. We we changed that. Because it used to be that in the rain, the works shut down, and they all did go on. We we changed that, and uh, Robert has done a very good job. Of I was going to say I told him to say a lot. You're talking about you know, some of the walls you talked about, which are a couple of works that need to be dealt with. The walls that the city, we resolved them, and you can just get more of 
back into the transition center that's over there by you. What we've done is, uh, you know, we talked to the, uh, the superintendent over there. Long story short, through our contract labor, we, we get them from minimum wage. And they're on their way to, before they get down, what <clears throat> time the base they want to do, we hand them minimum wage to the actual facility. And when they actually finish their time, they're out. And we hire them full time. They already know our routes, they know our equipment, the whole shebang. And they make great employees. And unfortunately, or fortunately, those that are coming from a prison background like work outside and they stay local. They don't complain. Just just something to put out there to you. Are right. well, these employees hourly or salary or hourly? Um, well, double pay for overtime. That's that's what I two people to come work and you only got one spot on a truck. That crew's going out working and about the time they get good and going, they say, oh, I got to go back. So then somebody has to stop doing what they're doing and take them back. And then really, we kind of had them going when we had a lot of community service. We had them check in at 7 in the morning and you work at 12 or you check in at 12 and you work back. That way, when we get you out there working, we're not bringing you spending one guy spending all the time trying to get people back. We didn't, we didn't call them crews. So they, they were actually transitioning. They had like three months left. Well, I mean, our work crews because you've got to have something to do when you get out there. So, like our crew, if they're out there with our ditch and crew and we're working on the ditch and they're with us, they can't drive a big county vehicle. So, we have to take them with us and then bring them back. But long story short, we, we didn't even pay them, we paid the facility. Mm -hmm. And the facility gave them a little cut from the minimum wage we were having. And basically, they completed their sentence. Uh, they notified us, and we just we sprayed them on full time. And that's kind of what we do now. We have a, a more stable and reliable workforce. Mark, does this answer your questions and concerns? <clears throat> yeah, I'm with Bill on these bridges, so we really need to. <coughs> Bridges and culverts, uh, <clears throat> weed eating, sling blade, whatever. You, know, you used to see them out in different areas, getting the uh, growth off the bridges. Um, you know, talking about the prison crew, how many communities have prison crews? Well, I think Lance is the only contract that the state prison has now. They will open up any new contracts because, well, they struggle with keeping a prisoner qualified to work with these So, the last I heard, they weren't allowing any contracts, but they're honoring ours and keeping with it. But they do a lot of work. They yeah. work hard. I just want to know that I would be able to Oh, no, no, I think I think that was the There's no challenges that we were in. Thank you. There ain't nothing. I can see. I see you in that room. Are there any technology needs that could help you be? I mean, I know you were as efficient as anybody I've ever met or dealt with in my life, but I mean, I, I just think about how organized you are. Is there, I mean, are we like, we have like GPS <coughs> tracking on our. We don't have tracking. I think it the biggest thing that would help us do a better job is to keep the equipment and have enough employees to run it. We we do have a tracking system. It's not GPS. It's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I can call out there and give her a roadmap, and she can pretty well tell me who has been there or when they're supposed to be there. Uh, within just a matter of minutes. If she doesn't know, she said, she'll say, let me check and I'll call you back. And within 15 minutes, I've got the information I need and she and I have discussed how we will address whatever the problem is. So we don't have that technology, but we have maybe what's better than 15, well, 15 minutes? Can be. Yeah. What takes so long? 
like you said, your highest level of trash comes on your 50 to 55 mile an hour roads, and that's the reason why. And then, do you have garbage trucks, not tarp, or they pack them so full? Sometimes I'll see a garbage truck, and it's so full that if the wind catches it just right, that whole top layer's going to be on the road. And we're seeing a lot of, not the steer off in a different direction, but related to garbage trucks, a lot of curbs are getting run over and over with some garbage trucks, don't you, Mike? They're, they're just handy and breaking. Well, I think that can be addressed in our franchise agreement with our <coughs> trash haulers, our curbside pickup, that there be a certain amount of responsibility, whether it be uh, hauling large loads that they've got to be covered and there's there's some things there that can be tweaked to kind of help that a little bit. At least bring it to their attention that they are part of the problem. I mean you tell right out there is one of the biggest areas for trash is 84 out there next to the landfill. It just didn't all flow there. I mean it's a lot of it is coming there from halls going back into the landfill. Anything else? Okay.